Hello, welcome to the second part of the real tool. So this part, we're going to make a digital asset and add some changes. So if you followed along, you would already have this setup. So where we made the base logic of doing this. And what we're going to do now is we're going to select everything except from the curve, because the curve will be always as input for our tool. And we're going to click sub network. So it will collapse in one single tool. And we're going to then write, and we're going to right click, make digital assets. And we're going to say tutorial, uh, real tool or something and press accept then we will have this menu and we will be able to can create parameters over here so we can make a custom interface so currently when you do this you don't have any certain parameters to play around with so we're going to make our own of course so what we're going to do here is we can just dive in here and we can for example grab the sizes so this can be useful to change this on the fly if you like plug in different models so here we're gonna grab the size so here grab the length uh, so this is length for the large piece for example so large piece um this can go for example from zero to ten then we have like the length for the medium piece so medium piece then we have here the length for then the smallest piece so small piece so once we have that we can just press apply and then we should have here these sliders so you can always go back here and play, with, play around with the range so maybe set them all to 10 from 0 to 10 so play accept and you can also now see that they are just like this is like the small one and going up also, you, why, and by doing this, we now have uh, linked this value in green, which means if we click on it, we now have actually a link or a reference. So this is a channel referencing. What we can do is we can actually just copy this. So we can copy this and go back to our uh, scaling nodes. And instead of using this hard coded value of eight, we can now paste a, uh, we can now paste this part where it says grab actually the parameter linked. And we can do this for the other ones as well. So here we're going to go back to this one, copy this. And instead of the four, we're going to paste here that value. Same for this one, grab this value and override it here, like so. So if you go back now here and change that, you can see that if I, for example, would now fill in bigger values, we are now spacing this accordingly to the value. So of course my size, my sizes are now 10, 10 and 1.8. So I would actually have to fill in uh, a model that's actually units 10. Otherwise, as you can see, it's not working fully with my tool. This is the way if you would input custom models, you can always set that value here. What can also be interesting to do is of course have a scaling controller. So what we can do is we can here, for example, try to add more and more, add more and more values where we can control the scale. So let's say if you want to control the height scale, then we also need to replace this value one here with a custom value that we have. So let's build a controller where we can uh, control the X, Y, and Z values of the scaling individually. And I will do it actually for a global one. So we will immediately affect all of them. And uh, what can be interesting is to actually merge uh, this one. So they're merging all the points together. So in the next video where I'm going to open this in, in Unreal, we're going to actually just send out points to Unreal. But in Houdini, we will just like use models. So I'm going to keep this here on the side for now. And I'm going to here build a wrangle. And in here, what I will do is I'm going to say add the scale this is equal to setting the values of having a channel uh, for having channel for scale x. Close it off. And then we're going to copy this here. Scale y. And then scale z. And fully close this off. So this is currently what I'm having right now. 
uh, what I also probably want to do is like currently I'm here, I'm overriding my scale because I, I don't want to override them. I want them to be multiplied. So I'm going to here add a multiply this little magic that we need to do here is we actually need to click this button on the side and I will create here the scale X slider, scale Y slider and scale Z slider. So if you type this, it will automatically, if you press the button, create a slider here at the bottom. So if I now go to my attributes, I will see if I go to my scaling, I can now here control the X values, the Y and the Z. So this can be useful again if you plug in different models where maybe you're not happy with how a model looks, you can just tweak the scaling of that. So I will now grab again my menu here and we're gonna here grab these values and press maybe add a spacing here in between them. You can of course give them different names like uh, width, height and length. So you can also know uh, about that as well. Now, if you still want to use like the copy to point system with that, that's also possible. So I'm gonna here remove that for a moment and I'm gonna quickly show you uh, the result of that. And here's how we can still use the copy to point system. So what I will do is for each uh, point, I will add a variant attribute. So the variant attribute here is a integer that is either zero, one, or two. Then in the copy to points, uh, we can actually say use the variant attribute. And what I will do is I will look here to the other side. And here we also have that variant attribute available. So we have zero, one, and two. So we'll just basically match the points based on attributes. So when the attribute is variant zero, it will use this box. When it is one, it will use this box. When it is two, it will use this box. So this is controlled now by attributes. So that's uh, another way of how we can do this. So we can still go here and we can, for example, as you could see, play around uh, with these sizes and scales. So we can tweak that uh, individually. So I'm gonna here reset it to one, of course. So it's in place. Um, what is also a good thing to do is be using an output node. And for example, this will always be my output. So whatever I do, this will be my output. Something that can be interesting to add is, let's say I have multiple rails. How can we do that? We can quickly add that here on top. So in between here, what we need to do is we just need to place a sweep node. So in the sweep node, what we need to do is we need to create a ribbon. And in this ribbon, uh, if we, for example, here set the width to, for example, five, uh, we can see we have like this ribbon. We don't, we don't like want a full geometry surface. We only want to have uh, columns. So we just have like lines of them. And the amount of the lines here is then here, this value. So now, for example, let's say I want to have three rails next to each other. I can say uh, this value and the width. So if I now would plug this into my system, you can see that our system still works fine with that, of course. So this can also be part of uh, our tool and might be also interesting to use a switch node for this. So uh, switching node, so the default value is this and we're gonna plug it in like so. So I'm gonna go back to my menu. I'm gonna here grab this and I can say amount, amount rails. This can go from maybe like one to five, but it'll have to be like uh, an insane amount gonna press apply. So by default, we will have one. And when this value is equal to one, we only should have the first output. So I'm gonna grab the reference here and I'm gonna make a small logic here. So if this value uh, is not equal to a value of one, we use the first input. And as soon as this value, the amount of rails gets, for example, number of two, we're gonna switch that to then this part. So because it's not equal to one anymore. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm also gonna say minus one. That because we are now actually having two lines because this is actually adding always one. So as you can see now we can have more of them. Uh, we can of course also create the width value. So asset uh, width uh, width between rails. 
and press apply. So now I can also control the width value. We should probably set a better range. So range should be maybe going to 30. So that's almost it for our tool. The only thing left to do is maybe clean up this menu a bit more if you want that. So we can go here and we can, for example, make folders if you're interested in having like multiple folders. We don't have that many parameters. Um, so it might be interesting to, for example, use a separator. So here place a separator in between that. Um, you can also do a separator here after the scale. So we have like, so we are separating here, setting the piece size. And here we are setting the scale. And then here we are adding rails. Or again, you could just grab a folder and you can just grab the values, drag it in the folder. And you can just say, for example, set uh, the size of the pieces. So you can also do it in that way, as it's up to you on, on what look you want to go for. So we created now our basic tool. Uh, we still have like placeholder models, but in the next video I'm going to move over to Unreal and actually use some proper models uh, and, fi and final tweaks to the tool. So if you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching.